Happy Friday and welcome to CU at USC. My name is Dan Toomey and my guest tonight is Mr. Joe Furin. He is the general manager of the historic LA Coliseum right next to USC. Don't go anywhere, it's bound to be a fantastic interview. And welcome back. Thank you very much for sticking with us. Once again, my name is Dan Toohey, and Mr. Joe Furin is our guest tonight. Thank you so much for joining Hi, us. Um, so uh, for those of you who don't know, Mr. Furin is the general manager of the LA Coliseum, a historic landmark in the Los Angeles community. And uh, I think just to start off, um, describe your role as the general manager of the Coliseum. I think many might not know exactly what a general manager does specifically. I think people are familiar with the title, but the exact you know requirements sure. of it. Sure. Uh, the first distinction to make is I am not with a team. I am not with the USC football team or the Los Angeles Rams, sure. for example. I, I represent the facility. So, uh, and with that, it's it's overseeing all aspects of the facility. Uh, so we we book events, whether it's a concert or a soccer mm. game or, or a football game. We book events, and then we uh, interact with the organizer to make sure that the stadium is set according to and how they need it, whether the end zones need painted. Uh, uh, or a setup is required somewhere else. So there's a setup component. Mm -hmm. And then uh, for the crowd coming in, we want to make sure that they park, they come in in, a, in an efficient fashion, uh, restrooms are clean, the, mm -hmm. the hot dogs are hot and the yeah. sodas are cold. Yeah. Uh, they can have that interaction as, as trouble-free as possible, get to their seat and enjoy the content mm -hmm. and then go home. Um, and so all of that stuff is, is under my realm and I'm fortunate to have a good team mm -hmm. uh, and subcontractors that we work with, but, yeah. but basically that's, that's all the stuff that falls under the general manager. Mm -hmm. And so you, you're there from beginning to end, it seems, like always on the clock. And I think we, we talked about this earlier briefly. You are a, a, a Trojan, Trojan alum. Yep. And uh, you really, um, I would love to hear more about your, your personal history with the Coliseum, you being from Los Angeles. Just describe, sure. uh, I guess, briefly where you first became involved with the Coliseum. Sure. I was a, um, a sports information major at USC. Mm -hmm. uh, this was back in 1985. Uh, and uh, I had to do an internship, um, so uh, uh, me and my classmates were talking about where we're going to go, and some people applied with the Lakers, and some people applied with the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. I applied uh, with the Clippers. Mm -hmm. They were playing at the Los Angeles Sports Arena. So for my first uh, uh, season, I was an intern for the LA Clippers, uh, PR intern, uh, but then I got exposed to the building itself, mm -hmm. and it was amazing to me uh, to think that one day, and, and it was Sports Arena and Coliseum, so it was amazing to me to, that one day it's a Clippers game, the next day it was a Raiders yeah. game or a USC football game, and then we had boxing, mm -hmm. and then the next day was a Raiders game, and then Ringling Brothers on uh, Ringling Brothers Circus is mm -hmm. coming to town, WWF wrestling and Hulk Hogan. Mm -hmm. It was just amazed. I was amazed at the variety of stuff that the facility did that was beyond just one sports yeah. team, and. In some ways, I just fell in love with it and mm -hmm. never left. And it's it's interesting to note that you, uh, I guess, your relationship with the Coliseum, you, you being born in Los Angeles and having always been connected with it, really speaks to the nature of the Coliseum itself. It's such a, a, a historical landmark, as we mentioned earlier, to the Coliseum. And I guess in that regard, uh, if you wouldn't mind elaborating upon just the historic value and what the Coliseum has meant to the community um, during your time as general manager. Sure, sure. It's um, uh, we're fortunate. We're 94 years old. The stadium is 94 wow. years old. It's a national historic landmark, uh, known for hosting two Super Bowls, two Olympics, uh, a World Series, numerous rock concerts. Mm -hmm. The USC has played there since uh, uh, 1923. UCLA Bruins were there for for six, seven decades. Wow. The Rams, the Raiders. Um, you know, so so the number of events that have gone through that place mm -hmm. is astounding. It's it's uh, something like 4,700 documented events. Uh, 117 million people have come come yeah. uh, to enjoy themselves. 
So uh, those types of events, for the longest time, this was the only place in the city um, to, to mm -hmm. gather to see something. You know, this, this again, uh, long before 24-7 uh, uh, highlights that you could get on your phone or, or your internet mm -hmm. or your iPad or something like that. So if you wanted to see the fearsome foursome, if you wanted to see Sandy Koufax mm. pitch or, or, or you know, uh, Jackie Robinson play at, at UCLA or something like that, you came to the Coliseum. Exactly. That's where you saw it. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, it was the gathering point. It was mm -hmm. where a lot of things happened, where, where memories were made and, mm -hmm. and, and their uh, uh, athletes overcame adversity uh, to, to achieve, you know, uh, uh, the best that they could be, the best the teams mm -hmm. could be, stuff like that. And so those are the memories that as a spectator, you carry with you and mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I was a kid and I saw this happen and my dad took me to that game yeah. my, I went with my grandfather so generations and generations of Angelinos have enjoyed events at the Coliseum so yeah. you know in, in some ways we, we've been the glue to, to the, mm. the, the center point for a lot of these wonderful, wonderful activities. Mm -hmm. And the Coliseum itself, just the way it's, it's built and, and is also presented by being labeled as the greatest Coliseum in the world, it is a spectacle. And I think to, to go back to the beginning of the Coliseum briefly for when it was first built, um, why, why, I guess why the title the Coliseum, uh, would you say? Well, um, it, first off, it started with the, with the city leaders. Before the Coliseum sure. was built, they, there was talk about doing a stadium, some, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, a place that the public could gather for spectacles. Um, and and uh, city leaders had, had vision. They wanted this to be a grand place. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were talking of building something for 70, 80,000 people, which at the time, uh, you, you know. That was, that, that was like a fantasy at the time. Well, yeah, not only was it a fantasy, but the population of L.A. wasn't that large at all. So, you, mm. so you're building something that proportionally, you know, didn't really make course, sense. Yeah. <laughs> but they had the vision. and City and, of dreamers. <laughs> <laughs> city of dreamers. But there's a story out there that the, the city leaders approached the, the International Olympic Committee sure. for the 1932 Games. And the committee oh, said, wow. where's Los Angeles? <laughs> and then their next question is, well, where are you going to play? Mm -hmm. And so that was part of the impetus to build something big. So it, was, so it came out of the Olympics or the idea for the Olympics? It, 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 there was a little bit of uh, parallel tracks at the time wow. happening. But, yes, the, mm -hmm. uh, the Olympics would not have come to Los Angeles if there was no Coliseum. Mm -hmm. they, they needed a place to host it. And, and when it was originally built, uh, it, it, it was a, for about 75,000 seats. Opened in 1923, mm -hmm. 75,000 seats. L.A. got the th 1932 Olympics, mm -hmm. and almost immediately they expanded and to it over. It hasn't stopped. They over expanded to over 100,000 seats wow. in less than nine years. So, wow. I mean, think about that for a second. Yeah. You open a building, and two years, years later, you're already adding 30,000 seats yeah. um, because the Olympics were coming. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, and and so again, city of of dreamers and visionaries. If you're building something. You know, the, the Roman Colosseum was, was the most famous Colosseum out there, and, and that's where the name came yeah. from. Yeah, and, and, and just like the Roman Colosseum, it does have that history to it. Um, and especially since uh, we discussed earlier, um, and also for any of you who haven't been to the Colosseum, I highly recommend you attend it because you really don't get a sense of just how grand the place is until you really enter it. And um, I think what's interesting that we talked about earlier is that the tradition of the building is, is still such a, an important piece of it. Even you know, in 2017, how many years after it was first created, and describe your role in uh, maintaining that tradition while also trying to move forward. I guess. Well, it's the it's a challenge because they don't build them like that anymore. It, sure. is, it is a it is a single bowl configuration, mm -hmm. um, uh, and that was the style back in the 20s and 30s when they were building stuff. Now, now um, look at a, a modern stadium. The the sight lines are much closer. There's luxury, premium amenities, mm. suites, and, and things like that. Those were not um, uh, part of the discussion back in the, in the 20s when they were designing the stadium. So it was designed in a unique manner in that bowl configuration. Mm -hmm. Yet it still uh, can, can uh, empty out 90,000 people in less yeah. than 30 minutes. So the exiting, the, the way to get in and stuff like that um, uh, is amazing that they, they built it in mm -hmm. that manner. It's not perfect like any, any 
thing uh, of that age. No, but you know. it feels it doesn't feel genuine if it is perfect. It, right, <laughs> it, exactly. There's some sort of nostalgic throwback yeah. to it. You know, it's it's the concrete from from 1923 exactly. that's still there, and mm -hmm. and uh, so it's an amazing. It's it's basically it's had a few modifications, and we we've, we've added lights and mm -hmm. things that weren't part of the original design but for all intents and purposes it's the exact same stadium that it, that it was mm -hmm. when it opened and do you does the administration have any plans for future renovations just moving forward in the, in the next couple of years we, we do the the university okay. uh, uh, took management of the Coliseum in in uh, 2013 okay um, from the Coliseum Commission which is was a governmental agency and part of that uh, management commitment the university committed to, to run it for uh, uh, well, it was supposed to be 100 years, but uh, ended up being 98 by the time the deal mm -hmm. deal f was finally done. But the agreement was the university would manage it for 98 years um, uh, and put uh, money into renovating it and, and keeping it up. And, and mm -hmm. this is all, uh, no dime comes out of the taxpayers, so the university is mm -hmm. funding the entire thing. And, and uh, so it's very... Um, uh, uh, we're very fortunate that the university stepped up and made a, a hundred year mm. commitment basically and the commitment to put tens of millions of dollars into the place yeah. to make sure that it can still host events long into mm -hmm. the future. And one of the really interesting programs I think you guys offer now uh, becoming an even bigger part of the community around you is the STEM program. Would you mind just explaining what that is? Uh, really no, we're, we're very excited about it and, and uh, it's a program that we put together. It started off with Basically, there were no public tours of the facility when the university took it over. And, really? And in some ways, that's a low-hanging fruit. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's a public building. It's still owned by the state of California. Uh, it's a community asset. Uh, it's a shame that there was not an opportunity for people to come down and enjoy it. It's, yeah. it, it takes on its own uh, character when it's empty. On yeah. a Monday through Friday when there's no football game going on, it, it's still a special place. So we wanted to establish those tours, and and out of that came the STEM program as we expanded into offerings for for school children mm -hmm. and, and and classrooms and such, and so we we developed a STEM program that uh, that we're very proud of, and and it um, uh, while it's uh, at its basic stages, we we have some big plans to move it forward and make it even more and more robust, mm -hmm. basically giving a lot of a lot of Angelino school kids an opportunity to, to yeah. enjoy the Coliseum. And do you feel as your role as, as general manager, what, what do you look to, to get out of your position, I guess? Like, what do you, what do you feel like your, your job is in relation to the community surrounding the, um, the Coliseum? Uh, I, I see my job as um, it, it was a building that um, uh, the university took it over because it had been neglected and, and it needed a lot of really? upkeep. And again, like I said, there were programs that are – uh, that were not in place. Mm -hmm. So my job is kind of bridging the past hundred years with where we're going in the future and developing these opportunities uh, for people to enjoy the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's exciting. We've got a lot of lot of good ideas that, that, that we hope to be able to roll out soon. Yeah, and it seems as though, I mean, do you ever have a difficulty trying to uphold the the traditional brand of the of the Coliseum while also trying to implement these new programs or? No, I, I wouldn't say there's a difficulty there. Of there's, um, uh, you know, my challenge is in Los Angeles. It's, it's a very competitive marketplace. There's mm -hmm. a lot of choices. So if a concert uh, wants to play somewhere, I, I'm going to get into a bidding war, whether it's against the Rose Bowl or Dodger Stadium mm -hmm. or something like that. So my challenges are more... Uh, I can only offer so much with mm -hmm. a 90, uh, 94 year old facility. Yeah. You know, uh, we don't control the parking and things like that. Mm -hmm. But, but really, it's 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 uh, it, it's all part of the process. Mm -hmm. Now, I hate to cut you off, but we do have to go to a quick commercial break. And when we come back, I would love to hear more about the process of the stadium overall and uh, future uh, future hopes for it. So, don't go Absolutely. anywhere. We will be right back at see you at USC on Friday night. Stick with us. Welcome back. Thank you for sticking with us here on COUSC on Friday night. Once again, my name is Dan Toomey. Mr. Joe Furin, the general manager of the Los Angeles Coliseum, is joining us here. Thank you once again for being on. Uh, my pleasure. So in the first half of the show, 
We talked a lot about uh, the different programs that um, the Coliseum is undergoing now, as well as the historical developments of it since its um, inception. And I think uh, something that's really interesting to note about the Coliseum is that you guys have to make a lot of quick changes between, especially with the Rams coming to the stadium now. Describe that process, I guess, of having to change the change the field so quickly. Sure, it's uh, uh, you know we, uh, one of the challenges starting off is mm -hmm. we don't exactly know when the college football kickoff time is. It really it fluctuates more than the NFL. NFL is 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 very standard. Mm. So we could have a noon game uh, for USC, mm -hmm. or it could be a 7:30 at night game, depending on which That's network funny. picks it up. So that'll shorten our window. We when do you usually find out? Uh, there, there's about a two-week uh, window for the networks to make their selections. Okay. So, so, and then there's a couple exceptions to that where it's a seven-day window. So we could wow. literally be a week out <laughs> and not know exactly when, when the game is. <laughs> so we'll host one game, and the stadium will be decked out in cardinal and gold for USC. Mm -hmm. And then the minute it, it ends, we have to uh, sweep everybody out. Mm -hmm. We have to clean the place we have to restock uh, everything we have to flip it going from cardinal and gold to the blue and, and yellow of the mm, Rams yeah. um, and, and then we have to reset it whether it's uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the locker rooms or at the gates so uh, tables chairs yeah. setting things where they need to go so uh, again we hope to have as much of a window as we can that, but wow. sometimes you know we did they it really twice. test you with the college games. we did it twice this past year um, really? uh, and and the first time the USC game ended at 6:30, the the next time it ended at 10:30 at night. Wow! So so you, it really you really guys you have to be aware of what your scheduling is. It, exactly, <laughs> and so the that cardinal end zone, you know, you left if you attended the USC game, mm -hmm. there was a cardinal end zone that said USC mm -hmm. uh, at 10 o'clock at night as you're walking out. But when you got back there at one o'clock uh, the next afternoon, it was blue and gold and it wow. said rams across it and we had a crew out there painting the grass all, all night, night all night long wow well, and, and go ahead sure, Sorry. No, no 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 please i was just going to say there's there's certain things you can do whether it's bodies you know it's it's labor if you, yeah. you usually do it with 10 guys uh, well this time we might need 50 mm -hmm. but there's only so much you can do uh, meaning paint has to dry and you can't you of can't course. speed that up yeah and as if the game was late in november and now it's heavy dew the grass is mm -hmm. wet so we're putting wet paint down on top of wet grass and there's nothing you yeah. can do about it drying so wow. uh so that that, of, that next day they, you might have seen a little blue on some <laughs> of the rams uh cleats out there as they ran Get across a few the emails end zone. the next day <laughs> yeah it, exactly but it's all fun it's all challenging it's all part of the job sure and actually, that's something I wanted to touch upon is that the Rams recently joined Los Angeles. And mm -hmm. what has that been like for the for the Coliseum? It, it, it's been exciting, and, and not just for us, but for the for the city in general. To not have the NFL for, for 20 plus years, uh, uh, you know, there was generations that, that were born and, and raised that uh, never saw a home NFL game in the sure. city. So for the Coliseum to host the Rams for, for three years, before they they build their own stadium, uh, we're honored by that, and it's 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 a it's a very special time mm -hmm. period. A lot of work and stuff, as we were just talking, but imagine. but at the end of the day, it's still a special memory, and it's something that that we're very happy to be part mm -hmm. of. And in just on the topic of uh, future upcoming projects, one of the biggest headlines I think right now in the Los Angeles sports world, besides of course the Rams and the other regular sports teams, is that the Olympic bid for the 2024 Olympics Keeping the fingers is crossed. becoming more. I was going to ask, are you are you in favor of the Olympic bid? Oh, a absolutely. Really? I mean, in some ways, from a very from a selfish standpoint, as being an Angelino and running the Coliseum, we're the only stadium in the world to have hosted two Olympics. Yeah. So to have the opportunity to host a third, mm -hmm. I of course have to be in favor of yeah. it. They, you know, we can't pass up on that that type of opportunity. So mm -hmm. we're we're very excited about the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And what would your responsibilities be if if Los Angeles ended up with the bid? Well, again, it, it, I'm I'm uh, uh, overseeing the Coliseum, so mm -hmm. that would be the opening ceremonies. Although they're talking about a, a dual opening really? ceremonies, we would have a portion of it and the new Ram Stadium would have a portion of it, oh, okay. and, and, and they would do the torch relay between the two, so mm -hmm. it would actually be rather rather spectacular. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Coliseum would host the, the opening, uh, the track and field, and the closing uh, mm -hmm. ceremony, so wow. the, that, that part would be under my Doesn't sound well. like a small task. 
Look, looking forward to it. It's what we do. Yeah. Do you think there? Do you think there's a high percentage chance that we end up with it, or? It's 50-50. Really. Between us and Paris. Ooh. I, I, okay, I'll keep my fingers <laughs> crossed for us as well. And uh, something, do you, were you there or do you remember the, the uh, 84 Olympics for Los Angeles here? I actually started working there in 1985, so I just missed oh, it. Oh, really? I just <laughs> missed it. But I was here in Los Angeles, and, and I, yes, I do remember it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, whether it was Rayford Johnson lighting the torch or Carl Lewis, mm -hmm. um, you know, some of the stuff. So, uh, it, you know, it was a magical moment for the city of Los Angeles and, and to. Uh, have the opportunity to do that for a third time is mm -hmm. is very very special. Yeah, you know how how many places uh, can say uh, in their lifetime they've had two two Olympics in their in while they were alive. Yeah. you know. Um, so from '84 to knock on wood 2024, mm -hmm. that would be very special. Yeah, and I think something that that's extremely interesting about the Coliseum is that people people know when when you hear that the Olympics might be in Los Angeles, you know it's going to be the Coliseum where mm -hmm. the opening ceremonies are held. And uh, I think that really speaks to, you know, the, the, the historical importance and, and value that the Coliseum holds. I mean, would you agree in that regard? Uh, ab because absolutely. Because it's really, it's really, when you think Los Angeles, it's part of the title, ab right? Absolutely. Again, it's, it's, a, it's a, a stadium that was there for 94 years as yeah. the city built. And, and so, you know, for the longest time, it was the only... There wasn't a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a lot of places. So it hosted everything from from boxing, you know, obviously the football stuff, mm -hmm. but baseball was there. The Los Angeles Dodgers uh, played there before they built Dodger Stadium, but it's hosted boxing. The Harlem Globetrotters mm -hmm. performed there. We've had rodeos. We, we've had ski jumping there. Mm -hmm. Evil Knievel performed. Yeah. You know, people, uh, WrestleMania was held there. Um, you know, and politicians from John F. Kennedy to to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, yeah. Nelson Mandela, Cesar Chavez, Martin Luther King, the Pope. You know, again, the, these are the types of things, like you said, if they're it's, coming it's to Los dizzying. Angeles, that that's where they're gonna gonna yeah. be. That's and where I you're guess gonna see it. Running off of that, just kind of as a as a thesis question, almost, um, what do you think makes the Coliseum the, the the world's greatest stadium? Because it's easy to say, okay, this is America's greatest stadium, or it's California's greatest stadium, but to say the world's is quite the claim. So how, I mean, how would you how would you back that up? I, I guess it, it's the history. It's 94 years of a history and a legacy that no one else can mm -hmm. can match. It's a story that is unique to the Coliseum, and it's a story that is that really has three layers to it. We talked about the Angelino of of the 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 grandfather who who attended a, a Rams game in the 50s, took his son to go see a, mm -hmm. you know maybe a UCLA game in the 70s, who's now taking his grandson to go see a USC game wow. you know so so one you you've got many many generations of Angelinas that have that have enjoyed the Coliseum uh, so th that's on, on on the local level mm -hmm. you get onto a national level with uh, things like the Super Bowls the World Series the national championships mm -hmm. uh, the USC has won uh, the, the 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 historic clashes mm -hmm. between USC and Notre Dame or USC and UCLA. So so you've got a national audience for things like mm. that. And then you throw in things like the Olympics, uh, um, events that were, were broadcast worldwide. Last year we did the the uh, uh, World Special Olympic mm. Games. Uh, the Pope is previously mentioned. Yeah. Those are events that were broadcast worldwide. Mm -hmm. And so we get a number of visitors from around the, the world that have come to Los Angeles that say, I, I just had to come to the Coliseum. Wow. So I think that it, it's that history, that legacy, and that that connection, again, local, national, global scale, yeah. that, that that really makes us who we are in the, in the greatest stadium in the world. Yeah, because I, we, we have talked about uh, throughout this show how it's the it's part of the Los Angeles family, but it seems to be part of the global family. And in the, in the few moments we have left, I, I asked you earlier about what your favorite moments are in the Coliseum, and would you mind just reiterating what those are? No, not not at all. It's it's a very special place, but but all of my favorite moments are the things the average fan doesn't get to experience. You know, m most ninety nine percent of the people that that have gone to the Coliseum show up at kickoff time, or mm -hmm. for the you know if the concert starts at eight o'clock to see the Rolling Stones. 
but I'm there on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday or the night before or the mm -hmm. night after and I've seen the place in the middle of the night when no one's there other than the paint crew yeah. changing it out or, or you know things like that so there's a lot of memories that I have just because they're 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 private memories that wow. no one else in, enjoyed them it wasn't 90,000 people mm -hmm. and it seems like just like your upbringing uh, you've always been a part of it, and you mm -hmm. still are. And once again, thank you so much My pleasure, for being on Dan. the show, Mr. Fear, and it's been such a pleasure to have you on. Uh, once again, for See You at USC on Friday night, my name is Dan Toomey for Mr. Joe Fear, and once again, thank you. Have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you in two weeks. Have a good spring break. Ah, no problem. My pleasure. Absolutely. Absolutely. As you can tell, I, 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 there is a passion behind I can talk about it all day long. <laughs>